Um, you're very welcome to our session today. It's uh, uh, a whole day session with the title Stairways to Heaven, Mountainous Landscapes as Spiritual and Ritual Topographies. Um, and the session has uh, been organized by uh, three of us, as Thomas uh, Reitmeier, uh, Costanza Ceruti, and myself, Martin Callanan. And uh, I must say that, uh, Thomas, you've done a lot of the, of the hard work until now, so you can sit and relax a bit and, uh, and we'll try and help you uh, get through the day. Um, the aim of the session that we've set up, uh, as it says in the text, is to explore the nature of sacred and ritual topography in mountain and upland landscapes and to form a more coherent picture of the different rituals, uh, their archaeological signatures and common characteristics. Um, as a kind of a, uh, as a start to the, this theme, I thought I'd show you a little example of, uh, of a holy mountain. Uh, and I think that this is, uh, helps start focusing us for, uh, um, for the day ahead. Um, the mountain I'd like to show you is uh, on the west coast of Ireland. It's called Croke Patrick. As, the, the, as you know, St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland. Uh, 740 meters, 760 meters high. Coastal mountain. Uh, and it's uh, a very interesting case from our perspective uh, for the course of our session today. Um, it's a, a pilgrimage mountain. It's, one of the, it's the premier pilgrimage site in Ireland. Um, the numbers are quite staggering. There's a million people climbing Croke Patrick every year. Uh, the main focus of the pilgrimage is the last Sunday in July every year, uh, when uh, it's Reek Sunday, it's called. The mountain is also called the, the Reek. And on that day, there's between 15,000 and 25,000 people climbing the mountain on a single day uh, as a part of the pilgrimage. Uh, you can see here the actual traces of the pilgrims of this as a ritual uh, and religious uh, action is carved out on the side of the mountain. And you can see this, the traces of it from, from miles around. We're out on the, on the far west coast of Ireland uh, in the county of Mayo outside the big town of Westport. Um, and you see Croke Patrick. It's uh, quite the, one of the main features in the landscape. Uh, the pilgrimage is... Uh, is of course a Roman Catholic uh, in, its in, its common, in its current uh, version is a Roman Catholic uh, pilgrimage. Um, but it has much deeper roots. Uh, one of the things that it's known for is that uh, one of the practices, the local practices, is that to do the pilgrimage barefoot. Um, it's quite a, quite a surprising thing, and it, that continues on till today. At the top of the mountain, there is a chapel, and a part of the Reek Sunday is, of course, uh, a celebration of Mass. Um, there are, on the way up to, up to the mountain, there are all sorts of different structures, uh, and you'll find structures on the surface as well. I uh, recently visited the mountain, and it's very interesting to go around and see these kind of, uh, the, the kind of offerings or the, or the votives that are placed there even today by people. It's uh, pictures of people that are dead, um, pictures of, of unknown people, the statues. Uh, they're placed discreetly inside the cairns, as you see here, on these small little discreet cairns. Uh, and there are formalized places for offerings. And it, it was very interesting to sit and look at the type of objects that people are offering at this, at this little uh, site today. Uh, among other things, you can find socks tied onto the railings of the, uh, of the offering place. And this maybe has some connection with the barefootness or something don't really understand why it should be so. There were other very interesting things there. There were uh, the small bottles for urine samples. You can see one here. Why would people be offering that? Is it, is it to do with fertility or to do with sickness or something? This is, uh, this is Easter. This is April this year. On the way up to the top of the mountain, when you're making the pilgrimage, there are a series of sites on the way. And uh, there's like prescribed practice of what you should do. You should place a stone. You should throw a stone. You should go around certain objects seven times in a certain direction, say certain prayers. So the whole pilgrimage itself is ritualized uh, in, in a form of praxis. And um, there, there is like a formalized way of approaching the mountain. Uh, other aspects that I'd like to highlight about this uh, about Croke Patrick is its placement in the landscape. It's, uh, as I said, it's a coastal uh, mountain, but it, and it has a wonderful view, of course, out over 
uh, over this clue bay is called here on the west coast, but also out over the sea. Uh, but also from the land side, it's, it's the dominant feature. And if you're in from Westport and so on, uh, Croke Patrick is, is, it has a, a monumental presence in the landscape uh, in front of you. This is it in its winter coat. And you can see the pilgrimage route, uh, how, the, how the years, the thousands of years of pilgrimage have actually etched themselves into the mountain. In the area around Croke Patrick, uh, as away from the mountain itself, there are other, there was also a series of monuments and archaeological sites that are very interesting that but relate back to the mountain itself. Uh, here is a, a, a megalithic stone alignment that uh, there are different interpretations of it, but it can line up with the peak itself on certain dates. And there are quite there are a number of these in the district. Another more well-known uh, uh, monument that. Uh, is far from the mountain, but associated with it, is the Bowie Stone. It's a site with uh, Neolithic uh, art, rock art, the same age as the Boyne Valley uh, monuments, but carved on it. Um, and it has uh, been reinvented in the modern Christian version, and it's known, uh, or has been known recently as St. Patrick's Chair. And it's a Christian site as well, and it's, there's masses celebrated there. Uh, and there's a discrete uh, cemetery nearby. So it speaks to this continuity through time of these uh, sites that are like proto to the mountain, but connected to the mountain in a very uh, direct way. One of the interesting things about this uh, Bowie Stone site is that recently it was discovered, I mean, in terms of these alignments and, uh, you know, the solar uh, aspect to a lot of Irish monuments, as you may know from Newgrange and other sites. But it was recently discovered that there is a certain phenomena connected to this Bowie Stone. Uh, that has to do with uh, two specific dates in the year, one in April, one in, uh, one in August. And the dates split the year, the calendar, into three distinct parts. And what happens is that when you're standing on the stone and you look towards Croke Patrick, you, you will see this phenomenon that's called the rolling sun. And it appears as if the sun is rolling down the side of Croke Patrick on these two specific dates. So it's becoming quite, a, quite a, an event, this, uh, this Bowie Stone uh, sun event. And people are hoping that they get clear weather to see the rolling sun. So this is an interesting uh, feature. It's, it's a site that's far away from the mountain, but the mountain is central to how we are interpreting it and understanding it today. Uh, Crow Patrick is part of, a, of course, a modern uh, cultural um, inventions. There's all sorts of uh, heritage trails, and these build on uh, historical and perhaps even prehistoric uh, 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 pilgrimage trails in the region. Some of them are 40, 50 kilometers long. And the, the goal of the trails is Croke Patrick. Uh, and uh, of course, there is this, the tourism aspect to it. There's a reinvention of identity going on in Ireland with the secularization of society and and people are, are turning away in, to, in some respects from the, the dominance of the Roman Catholic Church. And this is an interesting feature of this Croke Patrick. It's probably never been uh, as popular as, uh, as it is now to climb the mountain. But somehow or other, people are reaching back past the Christian Catholic part, part to the, the, the prehistoric part and the Neolithic aspects and so on. So it's, it's part of the modern contemporary negotiation of what it will say to be uh, Irish and so on. And of course, there's a tourist, a very important economic tourist aspect to it. You see this, uh, people like this doofus here that has been visiting it the last couple of years. I think this is an interesting little case for us here today as we're going to discuss our session. It brings together a whole different, uh, it shows uh, some of the themes and some of the, uh, the meta themes that bind us all together here today. Uh, we have quite the temporal spread with the papers that we're going to be presented today. It's from the Neolithic, we have papers in the Neolithic, the Bronze Age, uh, historical times, we have ethno-archaeological, and even modern, uh, a couple of modern papers. Uh, in terms of temporality, there is this uh, aspect where many of the sites, that, according to the abstracts, the sites are used through time. So this, this notion of continuity of these sites, of these, uh, of these religious and ritual mountain sites. There's a great uh, 
geographical um, variation in the, in the session. We have, we have papers from Morocco, from Nepal, Poland, Scandinavia, the Pyrenees, and of course the Alps. Uh, we have papers from India, the Himalayas, and the, and the Andes, Bhutan, and Peru. Uh, this session is one of two today that are focusing on mountains. Unfortunately, they're both on the same time. And I think that uh, there is also, we can talk about how mountain archaeology is uh, like gathering strength as a sort of its own uh, sub-discipline. We had the keynote speak last night talking about uh, the emergence of mountain archaeology as a, as a specialized subject. And in recent conferences, we've had uh, a number of large specialized mountain um, uh, of sessions that focus on mountain archaeology and different aspects of mountain archaeology specifically. I can mention, for example, the USPP meeting in Paris last year. It was three, three or four sessions. You've had sessions at WAC meetings and at other EAA meetings. And I'd also like to advertise a little bit for the, the next US Prepare meeting in, in Morocco in 2020, where there will also be mountain sessions. So the session that we have today is, uh, uh, is part of a broader sort of development within, ar uh, within archaeology. And I hope that we'll be able to... Uh, also in our questions and we uh, will be able to go back to these themes that are bind the th things together. The idea of the complexity of mountain ritual sites. It go, it's some different objects that we're interested in. The individual votive offerings, the, the sites, the structures, the mountains themselves, their monumentality, their the wider landscape. It operates on many different levels. Uh, we have this continuity and also these breaks and reinventions through time is another thing. Uh, and I hope we'll have uh, an interesting and fruitful discussion of these, um, of these different themes together.